You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Wrapping with Dr. Jacqueline connects you with experts from all over the world to help you take charge of your career, your business, and your life. Wrap along with us. Visit drjacqueline.com to learn how to become a guest or a sponsor. And now, the doctor is in. Hello and welcome to USA Global TV and Business Talk Radio. You're watching Talking Heads. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck and I am so excited to have you here. This is our second program of the day and I'm sure this one's going to be just as fantastic as the last one. This is a presentation platform. It's not about being interviewed. It's about having the opportunity to hear from worldwide experts who come and present a 15-minute lesson to help make us better personally and or professionally. So who do we have here today? Let's bring out our stellar superstars. We have Mr. Hyatt Ives and Mariska Dupree. Hello, nice to see you both. Good to be here. It and is and it, it's not a first time for you two together, right? Nope. We're, we're tag teaming it for the second time and we're having fun doing it. Oh yes. I love that. See, this is, part of the reason why I love doing this. You two didn't know each other. You're, you live in different countries and now you've actually gotten together on your own to put together a joint presentation. And I think that is absolutely fantastic. So congratulations. Well, thank you, Dr. Jacqueline. Without you, this would not have been possible. <laughs> <laughs> I try. Thank you. I want to let our audience know that our formatting for today is going to be a little bit different. So if you're just joining us, as I mentioned, this is a presentation platform. Hyatt has a presentation. Mariska has a presentation. So what we're going to do is first they will introduce themselves and then Hyatt will do his presentation. And we normally would discuss it afterwards, but we're not going to discuss it. Mariska is then going to do her presentation. Then we'll take a commercial break and then we'll come back and have a conversation about it. So before we have you introduce yourselves, I'd like to just ask you, I'll start with Hyatt. What was the reason that you decided to do this joint collaboration on this topic today? Well, look at the same subject from two different perspectives. I'm going to be looking at it from the business to business decision making set, uh, level. And Mariska is going to be looking at it from the individual delegates mindset. So it, it gives us an opportunity to address one topic from two levels. I'm good at one, she's good at the other. The two make it a fun package. Wonderful. Mariska, anything you want to add to that? Well, I think Hyatt put that quite clearly. And it's always fun to see how we can look at something from different points of view, because we might find that looking from the other point, we get some good tips that we can actually utilize in stuff that we want to try out. Exactly right. And Mariska, you know that this is accurate as a certified coach. I'm also a certified coach and the listening mentor that if we only think of our own perspective, we're not going to have very deep and authentic relationships with people, correct? It's, it's yeah. you know, what's this person's perspective? Try to put yourself in their shoes and hopefully they'll do the same for you. Yes. And we get more insight for ourselves because if we only look at an elephant from its trunk, we will never know that it has a tail. Wow, nice analogy, Mariska. Ooh. You are really on top of things today. Woo! <laughs> and I'd like to remind our audience that you are a day ahead of us, right? I am. That might that might be it. I am a little bit closer to the weekend, so my brain is already going. <laughs> Anything that we should be looking forward to is, since you're a day ahead? <laughs> well, I'm not too sure as I am not uh, locally based. So yours might be a bit different to mine. But so yeah. far, it's sunny and, um, well, moderately temperatured. So a good start, I would say. Fantastic. Well, here in the States, we've had... Uh, 
tornado, we've had a hurricane, we've had a lot of really bad weather related things. And uh, so I, in fact, I didn't realize that people not that far from here, their homes were leveled. So I feel very lucky. And, and I don't know why I was out walking in it yesterday, but that's another story. So I digress. Let us begin the show. Hyatt, I'm going to start with you. If you would share with us the value that you bring to this wonderful planet and, and why you've chosen the profession that you have. I've always liked to build things. And when I got into the business world, um, I worked for a company that was doing a trade show and low man on the totem pole, they said, uh, go and make it happen. And I went to the exhibit hall in downtown Houston and put this 20 by 20 booth together and met a Brit, uh, a guy that was in the business. And he said, you know, business to business marketing is a growing area and business to business trade show marketing is growing exponentially. So I got into the business to business trade show marketing and have loved it ever since and have uh, traveled all over the world doing it. And uh, um, I've, I've, I've taken a tattoo artist to a, uh, a tattoo removal artist to a tattoo convention. Uh, and um, I've flown around the world three times, two one way and one the other way. Uh, doing what I enjoy doing so you're passionate about it we can see yeah. that and we love it so thank you very much and Mariska why have you chosen the profession that you have and and what is the value that you are bringing to this beautiful world well some people find it um, very um, shocking if they f or when they find out that I have a background in engineering too and the way that I actually blend coaching and engineering is the fact that I enjoy understanding things and taking them apart and then making them better. So as you would do in engineering, I sort of do that with the way we think um, and see how we can grow um, both in our professional as well as our personal life and as human beings. So I'm very passionate about that and helping people do that. So that is me. Thank you, Mariska. I appreciate it. All right, Mr. Hyatt Ives, are you ready to roll? Yes, ma'am. All right, Mariska and I will clock, be back soon. Yes, I definitely will. And I'll give you your deck. And All right. Thank you, doctor. And ladies and gentlemen, we have over the past few weeks looked at trade shows from the exhibitor side and before, during, and after. And we looked at a number of elements of it. And today we're going to look at your choice as a delegate. We're going to look at trade shows from the delegate's point of view. And come on, machine. Uh, there we go. So as a delegate, we're going to look at your event experience options. We're going to look at what you can get out of the trade show floor, what you will get can get out of the educational sessions, and what you can get out of your downtime and net, networking. I'm going to look at it on the macro level, and then Mariska is going to look at it on the micro level. So on the trade show floor, your reason for going. We're going to look at this from three different shows, uh, a local show that may have 100 exhibitors in a single vertical. And you have the opportunity to visit those exhibits. The next level would be a statewide show that might be taking in 10 or 12 cities. So instead of 100 booths, you might have uh, 500 booths. And it might be in two or three verticals. And then you've got the national shows. And that takes in the whole country and may be 1,500 exhibits. A perfect example is a, the National Apartment Owners Association. Every major city has an apartment association, apartment owners association. In Houston, their show is the shortest show I've ever gone to. And it is a show that exhibitors just fight tooth and nail to get into. It's only a one in the afternoon till six or seven in the evening, but every single apartment owner uh, is, uh, attends. 
two or three weeks after that, the, the Texas Apartment Association happens in one of the Texas cities and it brings people from all over the state. And then two or three weeks after that, the National Apartment Association is held at a major convention city and may draw you know, 5,000. So those are the, the three levels. And obviously the bigger you get, the more focus you need to have on your reason for going because there's a whole lot more eye candy and a whole lot more distractions at the state and national level. So think of that as we go through this. What companies do you want to see or visit with at the show? Now, one of the reasons you're going may be that you want to get more educated in your field. So you can talk to the big boys and talk to the second tier people. You may want to be looking at a new direction. If it's an oil and gas show that's broad base with upstream, midstream, downstream, if you're in the upstream and you realize that that may be waning going forward, so you need to get into the midstream or downstream, here's an opportunity to get yourself educated in those areas. Uh, and so what companies do you want to see and visit with? And then which individuals in those companies do you want to visit with? You know, if you're an engineer, you want to talk to, obviously, the engineering department. If you're an operations person, if you're a R&D person, you need to identify the specific people so that when you come onto the stand, you can ask, you know, is your head of R&D, is your head of operations here at the show? Oh, he is, she is, can you introduce me? Or if they're not, then can you give me their name and contact information so you can get in touch with them? And then also, you know, uh, if, if you're looking to broaden your base out of the vertical you're in, then which ancillary, complementary, competitive exhibitors uh, are of interest to you? You know, you've got your agenda of the three or four companies. You're you're in the widget. You you need to buy. Your company uses widgets, and they're now going to start using left-handed widgets. So you can visit with all of the widget companies, and maybe even some. You know. Uh, it, it's, it's got to where, you know, whatchamacallit can replace widgets. So you could be looking at complementary or ancillary uh, uh, opportunities as well as competitors. So th that, that's the broad range of opportunities you have, but you need to be focused on your reason for going because at whatever level you're at, you know, it can get distracting. So stay focused. On the educational sessions, Sort of the same thing. You can increase your existing knowledge in the vertical that you're in and go to all of the educational sessions or all of the applicable education sessions in your vertical. Or you can broaden your knowledge into other disciplines. If the show, and I'll, I'll use the oil and gas uh, again, if, if it's upstream, midstream, downstream, and you're in midstream, well, you know, you can go to a couple of sessions in, in midstream, but maybe a couple more separate sessions in downstream. Or in the Apartment Owners Association, uh, obviously all of the vendors that uh, uh, want to sell to apartments, you know, and you can look at uh, all of the people that want to sell carpeting uh, versus all of the people that want to uh, put air conditioning in or security. So you can broaden your knowledge in other disciplines. And you can also explore new verticals. You know, if, if uh, you, you want to sell uh, something to the apartment uh, complexes that uh, might be ancillary to, um, uh, uh, let's say, the uh, HVAC, the, the air conditioning and heating, and you're selling a, a new kind of filter, well, you want to get to meet and uh, get to know those people that are that are primary suppliers of uh, HVAC that you can then piggyback on. Interface with other attendees at the session. 
here's something when you go to educational sessions don't show up as it's starting show up 15 20 minutes early and visit with the other people that are there they might be there for the same reason you are to look at new opportunities uh, to uh, you know, uh, for a whole number of reasons and you can get a whole lot of information from your fellow delegates at a specific educational session so uh, get there early and use that opportunity downtime and networking events you know when you can catch people when they're relaxed you get a whole lot more information from them and i would often uh go to the uh come on hyatt the the uh, uh, food and beverage people the, the 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 most exhibit halls have you know uh in-house uh, pizza and, and chicken and, and, and whatever. And then they'd have a bunch of tables for you to enjoy that meal at. Well, I would pick a table that had three or four or five people at it already and engage in conversation with them. And it's, uh, it could be uh, uh, fellow delegates. It can be exhibitors. Uh, and, and you can get a whole lot more information out of people in a relaxed setting uh, and using your open-ended questioning um, techniques, make a relaxed lunch period actually an educational period for yourself. You you want to turn downtime into quality time, and that's that's one of the ways to do it. Oops, hold on. Then use networking events to do just that. They're they're called networking events, so you can do it. All too often, I've seen people. You know, okay, it's networking time, and it's uh, we get a couple of free drinks, and we get some food, and uh, then we're out of here. Well, one of the reasons for the networking is to network with your fellow delegates, as well as with the exhibitors. The crowd is is less, the pressure is off, and you may be able to the the booth that you visited during peak hour and were interested in. Uh, suggest well how about we get together during the networking event this evening or um at at, uh, you know, at breakfast tomorrow morning so use the, the the networking events to do just that so you've got a number of opportunities you've got the uh the the, the trade show booth uh the trade show itself and this can be uh Again, at, at the local level, at the state or regional level, and the national level. And, you know, all shows are local. 70% of any show's attendees come from a 300-mile radius. We have, the largest show we have here in Houston is the Offshore Technology Conference. It's been it's 60, 70 years old. It will, in its heyday, uh, have... Uh, 1,500 exhibiting companies and 60,000 delegates. And they promote it as being worldwide and, and you know, uh, intergalactic. Well, when it's all is said and done, when you look at the final figures, 70% of the attendees come from a 300-mile radius. So know that all shows are local and use the show according uh, appropriately especially if a national show comes in they're going to have they're going to feature their local people and if 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 that's a uh, an opportunity that you want to get a part of you know go to the national show in your city or go to the regional show in your city as well as the show or or if it's nearby if it's within that 300 mile radius you know Go to, go to that national or regional show that you might not normally go to because it's, you're going to get all the other locals there. Same thing with the educational sessions. Choose them wisely. If there's, if there's 30 or 40 sessions offered, then determine you know, which verticals you want to look at and then how many of the sessions do you want to go to within one vertical and what other ancillary 
verticals. Uh, if, if the show has three verticals, you might want to go to, and you can go to a total of, of 10 sessions, where you might want to go to seven in your session, in your area, two in one, and one in the other. And then use your downtime and networking opportunities appropriately. Okay, so following up with me, I have a book, one of two, 88 Successful Event Strategies. You can find that at Amazon and either just put my name in or 88 Successful Event Strategies and you're going to find it. You can also go to That Ain't Not Right, The Use and Abuse of the English Language. That is a weekly email that I put out and you can go to HyattEyes.com to reserve your copy of that. That has been in existence for five years and you'll get that every Tuesday morning. So with that, I will return control of this meeting to Dr. Jacqueline. Well, from Hyatt over to me. So today we are going to look at goal setting and Hyatt mentioned one very, very important thing. Choose them wisely. And this is where goal setting comes in. So when you think about goal setting, we will be looking at the end we have in mind, focusing and using smart goal setting. So when we think about a trade show that we're going to, what is the end that we have in mind? So thinking about the trade shows, if it is just a local trade show, there is maybe not so many exhibitors. But when we go to the national ones, there's loads. There's loads to do. There's loads to see. And if we're not very clear on what the end is that we have in mind, we will most probably spend seven years, never mind just one day, wandering through the halls and looking at each and everything that pulls at our attention. So it's really important to think about our goal, why we're there, and what it is that we want to achieve. So thinking about this, we have different types of goals. So we have short-term goals, we have medium-term goals, and we have long-term goals. Now, normally, short-term goals is something that we can do within a quarter or half a year, more or less. Um, medium is a couple of years, so maybe one or two years, whereas your longer term goals go into the five tier range and possibly beyond that. So thinking about going to this exhibition, the trade show that you want to go to, we is that trade show hitting your goals? What is it that it will help you with? Is it something that is a pain point right this second, something that you need to get sorted out right now? Or is it something a little bit more strategic? So it's something that you want to grow into. Um, and being clear on what this is that the trade show is going to help you with. So having that goal in mind is really a key piece to when we are going to something like a trade show. The other element that we need to take into consideration is, as Hyatt mentioned, the trade show has different aspects that we can take advantage of. So there's the booths where we can go and look at products or services that might be provided. There is the educational aspect at the trade show. So there might be different um, educational parts that we want to take part in, or we might go for the networking, or we might even go for all three. And we might have some elements in our short goal that will be, um, serviced by some of the exhibitions or even some of the training. There might be some of our long-term goal aspects that might be serviced by some of training, possibly some of the exhibitions or 
even networks. You never know when you meet somebody that you might not necessarily utilize their service today, but you might use them in two or three years from now. So thinking about those things and being really clear on what the end is that we have in mind. Then, of course, the next very important part is focus. So when we think about the end that we have in mind, it might be broad. So having a clear focus on why exactly we're going to that trade show and what it is that we want to get out of it. When we're clear about these things, before we even step into the premises and seeing all these wonderful things around us, it makes it easier for our brain and for ourselves to stay on track and to also ensure that we utilize our time effectively and efficiently. So focusing, the one thing that will move you towards your goal best. So when you think about the end that you have in mind and your short, medium, long-term goals, have them written down preferably, um, have them tangible so that you can actually look at them um, and, and see what it is that you were thinking. Because a lot of times we do the thinking, but we don't necessarily put it down on paper, which creates the problem that because we are learning and experiencing so many things in the meantime, our thinking change. And we don't necessarily remember what it was that we thought about or why that thing might have been important for us. So having it written down um, and capturing these elements of it is really useful. So this also helps us to focus. It helps us to determine what is the steps that we need to take to get to the specific goal. And the trade show might be one of those steps I need to take. I might need to get into contact with different vendors that can help me out in a specific area. Um, I might need to learn something specific that the trade show actually has within the educational system and is an ideal opportunity for me to go and learn. Um, long term, I might want to expand or look at changing careers at some point. And looking into those areas, the trade show gives me a really good base to do some research and look at the market. Now, you can do this for career or you can just do it as market research as a business. So there's all these different opportunities that a trade show provides us. And being focused on what exactly it is that we're going to get out of it and making sure that we use our time accordingly will help us a lot throughout the process. Another thing for focus that we can think about when we're setting goals is to see whether we can get that one goal or that focus area that's going to give us the biggest amount of leverage. So sometimes we will go and we have one thing that we can do, but it only changes that one thing. Whereas in other areas, so say for instance, um, we think about the marketing aspect or the, the market research aspect of it. It might be that one of your focus areas is doing a bit of research. Now, while you are doing the research, you're also networking, right? So you are broadening the amount of people that you know within the, the system that is serving you. And you're also educating yourself not only by the educational aspects that the trade show has, but you're also educating yourself about what else is out there, what else people are doing within the system at the moment. And a trade show is a wonderful place to see what is happening. 
So that one small goal has multiple areas where it has an effect. So thinking about the best way that we can utilize whatever the goal is that we've set for ourselves and to get our focus really clear. So now, how to do this? Well, the way that we go about doing this is utilizing the SMART acronym. Now, what SMART stands for is specific, measurable, achievable or attainable, relevant and time-based. Now, we already know time-based, we have short, medium and long-term goals. So depending on where that goal lands, that would be the time allocation that you have for it. Being specific, we want to make sure that we are as specific as we can get in order for us to make it something that's measurable. So if it is research in a specific market that we're doing when we're going to the trade show, something specific that we might say we want to be doing is we want to look at three different um, complementary services to our own. So that's being specific. We also are able to measure it because we can sort of tick off. Okay, I did one, I did two, and I did three. We can um, also be even more specific and say what exactly about these three we want to be doing. Do we want to learn more about them? Do we want to meet more people that is within that space? So maybe network a little bit more. Um, do we just want to see what services it is that they have and what they're providing that we can utilize? So being specific, we can, we can drill down really deep at being specific. And then, of course, seeing whether it's achievable or attainable. So if it's a national show and we decide we want to go and see 10 um, and we only have ourselves and we have two hours to do this, is that attainable? Is that something that we will actually be able to do and spend an quality amount of time doing it. So if it is that you just want to get contact information, you want to literally run from one booth to the next, maybe, yeah, it's attainable. If you want to be networking and building relationships in order for you to have that for future, maybe not so attainable. So thinking about how we can achieve this and how attainable it is. And then, of course, is it relevant to our goal? So if I'm going to a trade show and, um, I don't know, I go and speak to the food vendor, so the food vendor themselves, the guy selling the hot dogs, and they have absolutely nothing to do with why I'm there or my business or anything else, um, might not be relevant to do that. So thinking about the relevance towards the goal, and that is the way that we would set up a SMART goal. So you can do this for something as easy as a trade show, or you can do this for your 10-year goals, um, but use, utilizing the same basic principle. So that brings us to just three questions that makes it nice and easy for us to think about some of these elements before going to a trade show or whenever setting up a goal. So what's my short, medium and long term goals? What is it that I want to achieve? Then where's my focus on each? Because where we focus, that is normally what we do. Thinking about an archer, if they focus right in front of them, they will actually shoot whatever is right in front of them. If they're going to look to their left and try to shoot, they will most probably hit something more towards their left. So where are we focusing? And then how can I make this goal that I've set for myself a smart goal? 
in order to ensure that I actually get out of it what I want to get out of it and making it something that is attainable and relevant for myself. And that brings us to the end of our lessons on goal setting and trade shows today. And if and when you want to contact me, you can get me um, at my email as it is on the screen or otherwise look me up on LinkedIn. And thank you, Dr. Jacqueline. That's it for me today. Well done. Well done, both of you. Excellent. We are going to take a break and then we'll come back and have a chat about it. How does that sound? That sounds good. All right, since we're all pumped up and excited with these two incredible presentations, we're going to watch a music video and then we will hear from our sponsors. This is Madeline Chan and I'm very grateful to her. She is now my vocal coach. So let's take a look. Madeline Chan joining us from the UK. What you give me is just not enough I need a love to take me higher And higher And higher Every step I take I feel more awake Getting closer now I feel so alive Stopping me This is how I live Ever closer now Just follow love Everybody, my name is Ralph Graves Jr. I'm the host of the Ralph Graves Jr. Show, and I want to invite you to pick up my book, Unstoppable. I wrote a book called Unstoppable. It's, it's seven universal laws that will transform how you pursue and achieve success. The one thing that my 20 years of law enforcement has taught me is that no matter who you are, we are all governed by universal laws like gravity. But in this book, we're going to talk about laws like the law of forgiveness, laws like the law of control, the law of intelligent practice, the law of expectancy. I was able to see how those, no matter what their background was, those who, who identified and, and treated these laws with respect, they were able to go on and lead successful lives. So pick up this book and you can go ahead and pick it up at Amazon.com, BarnesandNoble.com, RalphGravesJr.com, where, um, anywhere where fine books are sold. Thank you. There are 7.7 .7 billion people on Earth today. 40% of these people are under the age of 25. Young adults are the most fertile mission field in the world today. In scripture, we see Jesus pouring his life into 12 young adults who he equipped to change the world and all of history. Like Jesus, we believe that the best approach to reach the world with the gospel is to invest in young emerging leaders and equip them to build disciple-making movements. Concentric is the notion of surrounding and sharing a common center. Our center is the model and strategy of Jesus for both leadership development and ministry formation. As a global alliance, we provide equipping in biblical leadership based on Jesus' example in the New Testament. Jesus modeled for us how to make disciples that reproduce. Focusing on leadership development is key to creating movements that spread the gospel and Jesus' disciple-making strategy to young leaders around the globe. Our Ministry Alliance partners are actively equipping leaders and building movements of multiplication that reproduce the life of Christ. Join us today to equip young leaders with Jesus' strategy that will change cities and nations. The session that we had with BCAT was 
really entertaining and enlightening. We were able to put together some very specific steps that we as individuals can take and it was really fun to all come together and see sort of where we're going as a team and how we can all get there together. We had a tremendous experience with the BCAP partners. One of the challenges that we have as an organization is to make sure that we have the right people in the right chairs doing the right thing. To do that well, you have to have synergy. You can try to dream up ways to make sure that your group does that, or you can rely on experts. We would recommend BCAP partners to anybody who's looking to take their organization to the next level. Academy Sedan and Limo is a full-service transportation company serving the Philadelphia metropolitan area with full knowledge of the New York City, Baltimore, and Washington, D.C. areas. We pride ourselves on being the most dependable, conscientious company in the industry. Our always-on-time service and dependable pricing make us the company to call for any event or occasion. Our vehicles can accommodate any size party for any occasion. Our vehicles range from four-door sedans to SUVs to minivans to limo buses to full-size tour buses and can accommodate groups of two to 100. We offer airport shuttle service or over-the-road service without limitation regarding mileage or time and no drive is too long or too far. So if you find yourself in need of transportation of any type with any vehicle, give us a call at 610-842-4564 and let us show you what a real transportation company can do for you. Use code ACADEMY2020 to receive 20% off your first three rides, including parking and tolls. You're listening to Business Talk Radio, where we take business to the next level. Hello and welcome back to USA Global TV and Business Talk Radio. You are watching or listening to Talking Heads. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck and with me today are our experts Hyatt Ives and Mariska Dupree. And they followed a new format today that was quite refreshing. They actually got together before the show and they coordinated what they were going to present on from different perspectives and isn't it nice to look at something from another perspective so hi and i'm going to start with you how are you feeling when you heard mariska present and you heard her perspective oh fantastic she she picked up on you know uh the setting that i put in place and then drilled down to how an individual delegate has to react uh, if they're going to be, if they're going to use that template effectively, here are the things they have to do. Excellent. Thank you. And Mariska, how were you feeling when you heard Hyatt's presentation? Well, luckily we did have the advantage of getting together earlier. <laughs> Otherwise I might've been a little bit out of my depth, I think. Um, but it was great to see how we can actually look at exactly the same thing from two different um, perspectives and just seeing what different things we can learn from it. So I really enjoyed that. Wonderful, thank you. And uh, I'm gonna go back to Hyatt. What would you like the audience to take away from the joint presentation today? Um. One thing, as Mariska was, was talking about uh, the, uh, uh, the SMART acronym and the, the, the time frame that you spend with people in a booth, you really want to use the trade show portion of it to set, to make an introduction and to set an after the meeting meeting. Now, if the show is flow and there's a lot of time available, you know, go ahead and spend a little more time. But the you've got to remember that the exhibitors are there to see as many people as they can. They're really not, uh, again, unless it's a, a, a small, slower show, if, it, if it's a regional or national show, they want to get as many eyes in front of them and, you know, uh, 
as they can. So you want to actually time yourself to not spend more than maybe three to five minutes in any one booth. You know, you're not going to make a sale. You're not going to give a whole lot of information at the trade show booth. So simply make the introduction and set a time to get back together again or tell them, you know, I'll be in touch with you within the next uh, you know, week or whatever. Thank you, Hyatt. Mariska, what would you like our audience to take away from your joint presentation? Well, I think as, as Hyatt just mentioned again, the being really clear on what you're doing at the show. Um, it is very important to understand what your time restraints are and what it is that you want to get out of it. So making sure that you do make those connections, go to the booth. Yes, you will only be spending two, three minutes, maybe five if you're lucky, um, but making sure that you actually connect with the person that's there and getting all the relevant information so that you can set up that all important after maybe during the downtime type of meeting and networking and making sure that you're clear on what it is that you want to get out of it. Um, I think that is the main aim of the game. Thank you so much, Mariska. Uh, yes, hi. Let me, let me uh, elaborate on that. Uh, a situation, the, the uh, educational sessions, I was at a show where it was an oil and gas show and it was for drillers companies. The only people that could make a presentation had to be a drilling company. My client had a downhole product that they wanted to get in front of a specific drilling company. Well, that company had an educational session that was sponsorable. So I told my client, sponsor their educational session. It's going to put your name next to theirs at the session and then invite the presenter who happened to be the president of the company to come and visit your booth. Well, they did that and the president of the drilling company with his uh, two or three top people came to the booth. The president of my client company and his uh, operations manager explained their product to them and I saw the, the blood drain out of both of their heads when the president of the drilling company said, I don't need your product. The reason I'm so successful is that I'm drilling in a state that does not require me to use that. All the other states do. So while wow, you've got a great product, I don't need it. Well, for the cost of a $500 sponsorship, they got a whole lot of information that it might have taken them months to get otherwise, and they were able to walk away from that. So use the educational session, go introduce yourself to the speaker, uh, and, and you know, use it for more than just the information, use it for uh, in-depth uh, look at the sponsoring, offer, uh, sponsoring company. Fabulous, thank you, Hyatt. One thing that I would like to add, and, and this reminds me of when I was back in corporate and we had to break into groups of two to work on different projects. And, you know, it's like, oh, yeah, I want to be with Bob. I'm good friends with him. Or I want to be with Susan. And then they would break you up with somebody that you never met before. And maybe they're from a different part of the country. It's like, oh. I want to work with this person. I want to work with Jill. I love Jill. We, we go out to lunch all the time. And the, the most amazing thing happens is that you learn something from that other person that you never would have learned otherwise. And that's what I'm kind of seeing here between the two of you. I think it was wonderful what you did. I think it's actually a good strategy going forward that people start connecting and presenting from different perspectives because I think it really helps the audience as well. I will give you another example. I do this to this day. If I'm going to a networking luncheon and I see three people from the same company head to the same table, I said, stop, go to separate tables. You know, you know each other, you're, you came over together, you're gonna leave together, you know, 
tell your company's story to three different tables rather than talk to each other. And, and I've even gone so far as when I see three of them sitting together, I say, uh, you realize this is not the thing you should be doing. You ought to be over there. You ought to be over there. <laughs> I'm sure they're happy to hear that. <laughs> well, some of, them, some of them say, you know, you're right, and they actually get up and do it. Others say, hey, I don't care. You know, that's their prerogative. But I give right. them opportunity. And, and the best one was mm -hmm. uh, the Associate of Business Marketing Association did an annual day-long session for college students. They came in from around the Houston uh, area and uh, at the lunch had a table of eight with businessman, student, businessman, student, businessman, student. <laughs> and three students that had driven down from A&M uh, were going to the one table. And I said, no, you there, you there, you there. Well, they complained, but after the luncheon, they said, oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. You know, never would have thought to do that. And, and uh, you know, they, they all got more out of it by going their separate ways. It's that old story of getting out of your comfort zone. And, and I think also when you go to an event like that, or even if you're going to a, a national sales meeting, whatever it might be, your mindset makes so much of a difference. So if you're going there, you're already unmotivated. You don't feel well. You didn't get enough sleep. You're coming with a bad attitude and you kind of just want to like cower and hide. You know, it's like, let me sit at that table over there in the back. I've actually done that sometimes where I've gone to a national sales meeting and I just sit at a table by myself and I know I should be, but I don't, I'm not in a good mood. I don't feel well. And, you know, of course that doesn't last too long because then people come and start filling up the table anyway. Oh, we're, why is she sitting by herself? So I think you have to have a really good attitude and perspective and you want to be able to share what you know and learn what other people know. Well, and when you go with two members of your company, you know that Sue is the alpha person and she's going to be doing the talking. So you go and you all sit at the same table and you let her talk because you know that's what's going to happen. But if you go to a different table and the other person goes to a different table, then you are your company's representative at that table. And you know what? You're going to speak up because Sue isn't there or Harry isn't there. Right. And that might be your time to shine because Sue's always talking that darn Sue. She's always taking the floor. And now it's your time to shine. Yep. <laughs> All right, another brilliant show. Thank you both so much. I appreciate you being here. And I'm going to highlight you again. We've been running your banners. Hyatt, who should reach out to you and how should they contact you? Companies that are doing trade shows and want to do them better. Companies that are doing trade shows and want to go to bigger shows, bigger events, and get better ROI. I have a trade show guarantee. Uh, 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 trade show leads guaranteed and get in touch with me at Hyatt at HyattIves.com and at H-I-E-T-T -T at H-I-E-T-T-I-V-E-S dot com or you can call me at 832-372-6900 that's 832-372-6900 you can also find me at LinkedIn Thank you Hyatt All right, Mariska who should reach out to you and how do they do it? Okay. So I am a leadership and transformation coach and anybody that is within the leadership uh, space that want to up their game and get even better at what they're doing or transitioning into the leadership space and are not too sure what to do um, and want to start to learn, can get hold of me at mariska at journeytodiscover.com. So I'll spell that for you guys. It's M-A-R-I-S-K-A at J-O-U-R-N-E-Y to the number D-I-S-C-O-V-E-R.com. I just was reminded of J-O-U-R-N-E-Y M I C K E Y. <laughs> it's reminding the Mickey Mouse song when you're spelling it. Okay, it's been a long day. All right, <laughs> enough with the talking heads. All right, nice seeing you both. Thank you for being here. I've got another show coming right up in four minutes. So let me just find the closing credits and we'll all wave goodbye together. Remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, USA Global TV, so you can watch 
all of our shows all the time. Bye, everyone. Thank you, Doctor. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Bye.